Hello and welcome to today's video where I will be discussing a little bit about who Diocletian was and the history behind his palace. Diocletian was a Roman emperor who ruled from 284 to 305 AD. There is quite a bit of speculation around his birthplace, but most believe it was near Salona in Dalmatia in 244, otherwise known as Soline in modern-day Croatia. Born to a family of low status in the Roman providence of Dalmatia, he rose through the ranks of the military to become cavalry commander to Emperor Carus. After the deaths of Carus and his son, Diocletian was proclaimed emperor. He realized the Roman Empire was far too large to be ruled by just one person, so he divided it into two parts. Diocletian ruled the Eastern Empire as the superior and named his close comrade and son-in-law, Maximane, co-emperor of the Western Empire. Galerius and Constantinius were junior co-emperors under himself and Maximane, respectively. His reign really stabilized the Roman Empire, and he was one of those people who was successful at just about anything he did, especially in battle. In 303, he took up residency in his retirement palace, where he lived out his remaining days tending to his cabbage gardens until 311, where he died at the age of 67. Now let's move on into the history of the palace which, to be honest, was more of a fortress than a traditional palace. It is believed Diocletian commissioned Greek architects Zacotus and Philotus to design the palace, as their names were later found engraved there. But this is all speculation, as no formal documentation was ever recovered. The palace began construction 10 years prior to Diocletian's retirement in 295 and was completed in 305. The palace was six football fields in size, now claiming around half the old town of current day split Croatia, and was built six kilometers southwest from his birthplace in Salona. Remember, we're in the fourth century AD, and the sheer size and level of difficulty to perfect the structure should have taken at least a hundred years to build. However, it was done in just 10. The reason this was possible was because the workforce consisted of 50,000 slaves. It was also built to mathematical perfection, meaning the angles and degrees had to be just so, which would have taken an engineering genius. To recreate this level of perfection today would be extremely difficult, even with the help of computers. Each individual stone was hand cut perfectly to fit together as a sort of puzzle piece to prevent collapsing from earthquakes. The materials were mostly of local origin, primarily limestone from the nearby island of Brach. Diocletian spared no expense importing marble from Italy and Greece, as well as columns and 12 sphinx from Egypt. Now, these are a couple of pieces of rocks which was used for decoration of this palace. Um, this is the most precious thing. This is porphyrium uh, purple marble red purple marble from Egypt. Remember purple was his color. Mm -hmm. So this could be maybe from his sarcophagus, maybe. Mm. Then you have gray granite from Egypt. Then you have red marble from Asia Minor, Middle East, also green marble. Then you have gray marble from Greece. Then you have pure white marble from here. And then you have onyx from Egypt. Each wall of the palace had a gate at its center that is named after a metal. The elaborate Northern Golden Gate the Southern Bronze Gate, the Eastern Silver Gate, and the Western Iron Gate. The unassuming Bronze Gate once opened straight from the water into the palace basements, enabling goods to be unloaded directly from ships and stored here. Within the palace walls, you would have found his living quarters, living accommodations for his servants and military garrison, a food and wine cellar, gardens, and the Temple of Jupiter. So, this was his residence. This was religious part and ordinary part. On religious part, you can see two more temples, which are not on that picture, and actually today they are not preserved. Temple of Venus. Venus was mother of fertility. And this was a temple of Cybele. Cybele was mother earth, mother nature. Although it is now the baptistry of St. John, the Temple of Jupiter was originally an ancient Roman temple dedicated to the king of the gods. It still has its original barrel vaulted ceilings and decorative frieze, although a bronze statue of St. John the Baptist now fills the spot where Jupiter once stood. Unfortunately, we didn't get time to tour the temple. Diocletian proclaimed himself as the son of Jupiter and believed himself to be godlike. 
During his reign as emperor, he was on a crusade to eradicate Christianity, which was called the Great Persecution. This was the last and most severe persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire. If you were a Roman subject, you were compelled to sacrifice to the Roman gods or face imprisonment and execution. You also had to comply with traditional religious practices. During his 15-year reign as emperor, around 3,000 to 3,500 Christians were executed under the authority of imperial edicts. After Diocletian's death, the son of Constantinus, Constantine the Great, succeeded him. This is also where Constantinople gets its name. Constantine the Great became the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity and played an influential role in the proclamation of the Edict of Milan in 313 which declared tolerance for Christianity in the Roman Empire. Constantine the Great is remembered as one of the greatest Roman emperors to have ever lived. Diocletian is not even listed in the top 50. While Diocletian was probably the greatest emperor to have ever lived, based on his achievements in war and stabilization of the Roman Empire, he will not be remembered as such. Today, history does not remember or recognize the good Diocletian did for the Roman Empire, due to his persecution of Christianity. His temple is now converted into a Catholic cathedral in memory of those he slaughtered, and any history or remains of him have been destroyed. Today, the palace is no longer in its original form. Apartments, restaurants, and storefronts now line much of the inner structure. There are around 220 buildings within the palace boundaries, and it is home to around 3,000 people. For fans of Game of Thrones, Daenerys Targaryen kept her dragons here, in what was the basement of the palace. I really hope you enjoyed this virtual tour. Please don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out.